Sarah Backhouse for Hub Culture. I'm now joined by Dr. Rajendra Pacheri. Welcome. Thank you. How have you found the summit this year? Well, I'm uh, absolutely delighted to be here and uh, it's very impressive that you have such a large number of people taking part in the summit. Uh, so obviously the governor's got something going which has enormous value. COP16 is just a few weeks away now. What can we hope to achieve there? Well, from my point of view, I would hope to see that the delegates uh, take the science of climate change seriously because ultimately, let's face it, the negotiations have to be driven by the scientific realities of climate change. And they must understand what the impacts of climate change would be if we were to continue with inaction and what benefits might accrue if we indulged in action, both in respect of mitigation and adaptation. Uh, so I hope the negotiators um, do take some decisions by which the overall challenge that's provided by the science of climate change can be dealt with. I mean, obviously, people like you and I, it, the science is so clear-cut. Is it frustrating that there is still some doubt over climate change? Well, you know, if you look back um, through history, you would find that whenever a new body of knowledge emerged, there have always been a number of people who have taken a long time to accept it. And in the case of climate change, one understands fully that firstly, people don't know enough about the science of climate change. And to that extent, I would say we in the scientific community have not done a very good job of communicating. And uh, secondly, you know, there's always a certain inertia. There's always a certain resistance to change. Um, and climate change would require efforts in every aspect of economic and human activity. So it's understandable that um, there should be some basis for, uh, or it's understandable that perhaps people are not willing to move as quickly as science would suggest that they should. And how quickly do we actually have to move to mitigate some of these consequences? Well, just to give you a number that came out of our fourth assessment report, if we want to stabilize temperature increase to between 2 to 2.4 degrees Celsius, then ideally we should ensure that emissions of greenhouse gases globally peak by 2015. So that's just five years away. And uh, it's not as though you can't come up with solutions beyond that period, but they will be more expensive. That will not be the best and the optimal path to bringing about stabilization of the Earth's climate. Some experts out there are calling for geoengineering measures, something drastic to really help achieve these goals. What is your views on that? Well, as a matter of fact, in the fifth assessment report, which we've initiated work on, is going to look at geoengineering very seriously, and we look at all the lit literature that's produced or will be produced between now and the report being completed. Um, and geoengineering is an option that we will look at, and we'll certainly assess what its merits and demerits are, and I hope this will help inform the world on what can be done with geoengineering if it is at all an option. Understood. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajendra Pateri. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.